We start with a quote from our new Prime Minister, Mr Boris Johnson. Oh, my Lord. My friends, as I have discovered myself, there are no disasters, only opportunities, and indeed opportunities for disasters. This is out of your league with me, Will Perry, the greatest thing to happen to Rugby League, and a former Super League player, now part-time second-tier amateur, cutting his teeth against the likes of Barrow Raiders and the Rochdale Hornets, John Wilkin and uh, Matt Flanagan. It, no, is it Matt or Ma no, it's Mike? No, R and a K. Mark. Mike Flanagan. Mark. Mark Flanagan, uh, who I'm told sometimes uh, plays, sometimes he doesn't play for the Salford Red Devils. Can I say something, Will? I knew you would be a Boris Johnson fan. I knew it. I just didn't, it was without doubt in my mind. You, you've, you're from a, a very privileged background. Mm. You probably support the fact that all people who go to Eton should be prime Harrow, ministers. I went to. Be, I know you went correct. to Harrow, but it's very similar. Still a good school. Yeah, it's good to both, get it out there. Be honest. Schools. You would, would you? In fact, as I was going to ask you this later, but Mark, for example, a um, bit of a Corbynite. Not that we want to make this about no, politics. No, no, I'm not. Anyway, would if Boris Johnson became your boss? Would you stand down as an MP? Would you walk away from the cabinet? I'd like to think I'm a man of morals, so I probably would actually. But I wouldn't be in that game anyway. It's not. No, John. Not for me. I would fall on my sword. Fall on your sword. <laughs> would you? Oh, without doubt. Yeah. He's deceitful. He lied. Oh come on. All the way to go. Always lies. Hey, he's you? obsessed with power, as all politicians are. Anyway. Um, I'd probably be Chancellor of the Exchequer with a little red suitcase, wouldn't I? Just walking around with my pinky ring on. Mm. Some uh, <laughs> clips you might have seen have been released. Uh, on Super League's social media channels. A uh, comment under one of them read, never mind this, where is Whippets and Flat Caps? Uh, Jack Thomas then replied saying, I think this is Whippets RL, which is a shame because it's an official Super League channel and it probably will be sanitised. Well, Jack, here is the good news, sunshine. We're not going to be sanitised at all. Be Would you like to explain that we muck. used to do a, a podcast rather than yeah. just... We used to do a podcast everyone... called Whippers and Flat Caps. Yeah. Um, and we can promise you that uh, this is not going to be sanitised. Super League do not want that. So well, you we say have to that. give them a little bit of credit. You do, you because say that. You, you do say back. that, Will. Actually, I would think some of your comments from the original recording were sanitised. Series one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and let's not go into the detail of the comments that were sanitised, but there were some things on there. Okay. Not for public consumption. Your mummy wouldn't be happy with them, would she? No. Um, by the way, the hashtag out of your league um, seems to be quite big, I'm told, uh, in the LGBT and femdom communities. So just be careful if you are getting involved, what you're getting involved in, because I googled femdom uh, on lobstertube.com uh, <laughs> recently, <laughs> and it's quite, uh, quite eye-opening. So just oh, be oh, careful. Oh, so uh, I ha always, you can I use always the order my out. seafood from lobster.com. <laughs> do you know what a femdom is, by the way? Do you, I, I, I no. do. No. I do. It's I not for now, I don't think, but it's worth. Mm. Uh, it's definitely worth a Google. Uh, download uh, Out of Your League via iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from, and you can watch us on YouTube as well. What's been going on recently? What's been going on? Um, John, you've been on the telly again. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was working for the, the BBC yeah. covering um, the Challenge Cup semi-final. Still getting to grips with the live TV stuff, aren't you? But it was... Um, it's a work in progress. Some interesting well. interviews. You know, little pieces. How, how, did you rate your, how did you rate your day on um, BBC? I, I'd say with your media scrutiny, Will, you've obviously got some thoughts. No, I thought you were very good. I thought no, you were no, very good. Mark, don't. you saw him. Yeah, you sent me a few clips via WhatsApp. It was quite oh, funny, is yeah. That what, is that what's happening? Yeah, you're My in highlight group, was right? after interviewing Al Wormsley. Yes. You said, this is good, this isn't it? It was good. It was good. good, isn't it? Which is kind of one bit of our catchphrases. Yeah. No bit of an get, underestimation. Three people, well, but it went, yeah. it went to the whole of the UK. Mm. Um, well, how did you start it? With my very tall friend. Yeah, well, he's very tall. He is. I thought, let's, let's just put the, you know... Let's, let's inform everybody let's that he's tall. Let's be yeah. descriptive. Um, Mark's cracking up in a beer. John's already got one open. If you're wondering what that noise was and you're listening and you're not watching, well, uh, not. we're in the Northern Monk again. Great, northern I don't think great great brewery. Great I don't place. think you put the in front of it. Is it just Northern, northern Monk? Monk? We should get that right, bearing in mind we're using their facilities to record this podcast. Yeah. Northern Monk. There it is. It's on the wall we behind serve it. Tim Taylor's landlord. Lovely beer. Which is my favourite beer of all time. Is it? Of all time, one. since a small boy. Yeah, since I started drinking in Hull at six. Um, on, on the subject of you being on telly, John, and this isn't yeah. where I wanted the, it to go, but I'm just looking at some, some correspondence that's coming in. Uh, Carol, not Carol, Colin Reynolds. Carol! <laughs> is it my mum? <laughs> it's not Carol Wilkin, what Although she said. She Get off big, his head. She is a big fan of the head. podcast. Colin Reynolds, uh, Wilkin having a go at Salford's crowds again. Mm. Hashtag tosser. It's not disappointing, though, no, well, in, in response to Colin, your crowds are poor. 
Yeah. What, what, you, I mean, what's do they your need argument? That no, 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 their, no, no. need that rubbing in their faces? No, no, no. They have got poor crowds. I don't think I'm not. It's not being vindictive towards Salford to say yeah. the crowds are poor. It's not what he said. It's the way he said it. No, yeah. because he, what we were doing is belittling Toronto's achievements. And what I simply said, which is a statement of fact, that two thousand is one quarter of eight thousand. <laughs> what we get, which is a fact. Mm. So, Colin, I appreciate you are a plucky one of those plucky fans behind the sticks. Yeah. Well done. Well done to you for sticking it out. Um, now he's, now he's being patronising. There's now 1,999 Patron. others who really you're think you're like, I wanted this to be an apology and you're digging a deep No, hole. no, it's not an apology. My statement of fact stands. Okay. And well, it isn't a criticism of, of, of Salford or his support of Salford, but it's a criticism of the size of their crowd, which is poor. Yeah, I'm sure I some mean, of the, the Salford poor. fans would agree with, with Dave Wright's um, tweet to the podcast, John Wilkin, what a wanker. Yep. Uh, Angie says John Wilkin comes <laughs> oh across gosh. as a, that's it, that was it. John, um, John Wilkin comes across as a, a bit of an arrogant prat, isn't he, according to Angie. <laughs> mm. You're really cooking mm. up a storm here. Well, I don't care. Mm. No. I don't care. Um, right, uh, for those who might have listened to it, there may be 15 of them who might have listened to our old uh, podcast, Series 1. Mm. She'd never go back, like The Office, Alan Partridge, but we did, we came back. The office, the office, um, they did come back. Alan Partridge comes back <laughs> they multiple all did times. Come back. Yeah, that's a horrendous, yeah, that's a horrendous example. example. Anyone did, did the one series and got out of my Forty own. Towers. Mm. Sure, Forty Towers did about 15 series. No, they didn't. They did one, maybe two. Anyway. Maybe yeah. like Toto, Africa, the song. They never made another one. I, I, do like to get, I do like to get the rugby league fraternity involved with a few questions. So we're going to have a little bit of a question time. <clears> uh, question time. Uh, this one here uh, is from DJB Plastering, who says, how much can Mark actually squat? Because I don't think it's a lot. It's not a lot. Correct. Next. Really? Yeah, not that a lot. sounds like DJB. Have you seen my legs? Yeah. DJB yeah. Plastering is looking to just get a plug. <laughs> I know for exactly who. Plast- for all your plastering DJB needs, Plastering DJB is. Plastering. We won't shout um, uh, Mark, uh, John, you have to tell what's going on with this one. Baby's Yed. Uh, why was Babby's John yed. so scared? Baby's Yed. Why was John so scared of Gaz Hock? I wasn't scared of Gaz Hock. I was, you know, the he only was, time, he the was only everybody. Time, the only time I was scared of Gaz Hock was in 2006. We may well talk about uh, Great Britain coming back. But in 2006, we toured Australia with, with Great Britain and we had a team meeting. Brian Noble called a team meeting. We'd, um, we'd just beat Australia at the Sydney Football Stadium. But he said, one of the conditions is, guys, you go out for a beer tonight, but you've got to be at the team meeting in the morning. Mm. We get down to the meeting room and everybody's there but Gaz Hock. So me and Paul Wellens think, right, oh, We'll, we'll give him a knock and just try and get him up. And he opened the door to his bedroom, and there must, you know, the the sort of the the bar height sort of wine cooling, mm-hmm. you know, on a stand. There must have been ten of those in his room. He had a Great Britain tie on, nothing else, and he just told us in very uncertain terms that he wasn't coming to the meeting, <laughs> and he didn't appreciate our attempts to make him come to the meeting. And at that point, I was scared of him. Like Did you room with him? No, no, we just we just went to get him up. Because I I, I, I ruined with Gaz Hock when yeah. I when I first signed for Wigan, we went on a pre-season training camp to Lanzarote, yeah. and uh, we were all put in all the players were put in their particular positions, and I was ruined with Gaz, and the first time I met him, and then we dropped our bags. I would trained with a bit of a nerd back in the day, and then he decided to go out at night, but he didn't have any clothes to wear, so he just went into my wardrobe, picked up a coat hanger, said, "Yeah, that'll do." And then for every single night, he just wore all my clothes. And he'd come back the next morning full of beer, One sick, nil. blood, rips, everything, and just One nil destroyed gas. all my stuff. So cheers, guys. <laughs> well, he's a madman, though, isn't he? Yeah? He's a madman. He's a madman. Yeah. It sounds like the scene out of Flight with Denzel Washington when he empties the, the minibar. <laughs> it's an absolute <laughs> great, great. It's one of the greatest scenes isn't of it? all time. Isn't it just? Yeah. yeah. Um, we all know about those adjoining doors, don't we, in hotels. Mm. Um, just a couple more. Uh, this one from Peter Elder, who says... Which is the better podcast, Wilco? The five live one that you do, that you've talked about already, uh, or an, oh, and who's the better host, Will or Dave Woods? Um, Dave Woods. Yeah. Um, and, and just a final question, which uh, because they are some quite strange ones out there as well, from Gary, who says, which bread would, would fly furthest? A uh, nan thrown like a... A nan. A nan, not a nan. Not your elderly relative. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How far can you throw your nan? <laughs> Depends how big your nan is. Oh, that's a question. <laughs> <laughs> what a question. Go have a nan throwing to competition. Throw your nan around. Um, <laughs> uh, or a, like, like a frisbee, uh, or a baguette thrown like a javelin. Well, a nan. It's the wrong question, Will. Why? Because the question should be, essentially, the density of dough. So I'd no, you can say, ask whatever question No, no, but I was saying that dough in itself has a terminal velocity, so the shape of the dough itself... There's no, it's a different is, technique, though. No, 
if the bread was of the same way, I think the influence on the distance would be relatively le- like low. The what we should be asking. Uh, no, but I think if you threw a potato-based dough, right. maybe you know a really solid gnocchi. You, no, no, a potato dough. Well, you're like, overthinking or, things or maybe, again. You do this all the time. A, Just answer the question. Maybe even a courgette, sort no. of mashed into a, a muffin. Nan, nan. That nan. would. Nan, nan. nan. Vietnam. The most dense Vietnam. dough would fly the furthest. But and, that's not the question. That's just science. Mm. <laughs> Lovely. Answer, put your um, own questions so in next week. We, yeah. we, know, we know what John's been up to. Um, and you're off to Toronto soon, John, aren't you, yes. as well? Mark, anything to share with the group, share with your friends? What I've been up to. Mm. Where do you finish that story about... You know, that story that you always interrupt now. Your father. Father, yeah. yeah. Been to Ireland. Well, you're the best. Been to Ireland, yes. Yeah, we went on a three-day training camp to the west coast of Ireland. For those, again, not watching, you did some sort of partridge thing with your hands. What, thing. What, what does that mean? Uh, so we just drank camp, a lot of Guinness ah. for three days and bonded as a team. So there's 2,000 fans that are paying all their hard earned No, no, we, yeah. we wow. paid for it ourselves. Through no, you spon- paid for spon- yourself, spon- but you squandered 1,999. No, no, we're, we're getting the closer off the field so we play better on the field. Well, let's hope so. What if you lose now? Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> lose now in Super League. Oh, it's out there. Mm. It's Salford gone bender. <laughs> We trained as well, went on a big bike ride, drank a lot of uh, big Guinness. Big bike ride. Big bike ride. <laughs> <laughs> played golf. So we went on a bike ride. Golf. <laughs> You're uh, not 14, what did you do? You go collect a load of stones tell off the beach. Me about the bike ride. Just went up the west coast on our mountain bike <laughs> with hel- helmets and high vis. Bells, you have a little bell on the front. Yeah. Bell, yeah, basket. a little basket on the front. We went Red. on a big bike ride. And then <laughs> it was like a 25 degree day. And then when we got to the end, it was a stereotypical Irish pub that served... Irish stew and then lukewarm like Guinness. Mm. Oh. So then we just just what you want. On like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wow. was fuming. Wow. They've really got it nailed, haven't they? Salford, mm. big bike ride in Ireland. Mm. In we Ireland, we'll make the Bit playoffs. Team building. Well, well we're two points off the playoffs. You are two points. Yeah, off the so playoffs. you're the there best. You go. This we're could the be best. the best thing that sends yourself. But could send us an off. True. Let's see. Mm. For those who don't know, John married a swimmer called yeah. Fran. She's also yeah. a woman, not just a swimmer. Well, she was a swimmer. Yeah. yeah. Um, she can still swim then. I, yeah. I don't think you lose, when you retire, don't there's, lose the ability to there's swim. There's not a lot there. of evidence she can swim. <laughs> on the subject of, uh, no, well, on that subject, let's finish that first. Did you change Fran's name to a double barreled name, Housel Wilkins? No, she hasn't yet. She's yet. So she's just still Fran Housel, or Housel, yeah. as she calls yeah. herself. Yeah, yeah, I'm. Um, I think you will. It's, you've got to mark your territory in that respect, I think. Nah, not really. She'll no. do what she does. Yeah. I but so you'd be perfect. But you, you would she... like her to change, innit? Yeah, but I long since stopped trying to tell her what to do. Yeah. Like she's her own. Would woman. you would you go to House Holsel Wilkin as well? No. no. Like Robbie Hunter Paul, that's no. what he did, didn't he? Yeah. He was Robbie he Paul. I don't know what that I, I sense obviously four eyeballs. This nope. is Probably pre arranged what are you doing? No, not at all. No, no, You're trying to get Dave Wright to tweet in. Like, Look at him. He's pathetic. He hasn't even his wife's not, not even taken it. Look at him. Of... Gazok, he's scared of Gazok. A little, little bit of a bite. Pathetic. A little bit. It's just a little bit of a bite. I mean, it's something that you, you know. You don't, no, you no, don't. I'm not. You, you, you prefer to be. You prefer to be Fran Wilkins. In, in, in a misogynistic world, in a macho sport that I play, I'm more than comfortable with my wife not taking my last name. Yeah. Would I like it? Sometimes when you're traveling. Yeah, it's quite nice that people recognise you as husband and wife. Yeah, not I mean, too strange. Something people else would have had a big argument. She, she's left you, isn't she? Really, she's she's moved to London. She, she has she's walked well. out on the on the family house. She and has. This is quite personal stuff, but no, no, yes, uh, it's yeah, yeah. She's, she's right? living in London. Okay, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, for she's, work, she's not. I don't no, know, no, she's, she's not. The marriage great. is still fine. She's, she's got a job in London. She's yeah. exploring. Herself and London. She's exploring sexuality and other options. Other men. Uh, no, she's having a great time. She's I'm great looking time. after a pussy cat up north. Are you? She's left a cat with me, and she's taken my dogs. Uh, your dogs? Okay. Anyway, just, just uh, move on. Actually, on the subject move of swimming, on. I was hanging out with um, Adam Peaty today. You say you weren't hanging out with him. You, you were doing you, a job of work. And you <laughs> yeah, I was doing my job of no, work. You know you, what you're doing, actually, Will, is your job of work, which is talent, interviewing talented people. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He's made a career well, on Are you suggesting people. that you two are talented people? No, no well, a lot less than really? Adam Peter. More than you, yeah. yeah. But in, what, in what field? In quite a sort of narrow well, no, field. In, in a sporting sense, we've, we've represented our country at sport, whereas you've just been maybe fourth. <laughs> you're fourth. <laughs> Did fourth, you say Mark to represent fourth, his country? Well, England Knights, which is technically <laughs> England, <laughs> England, England B team. Well, Will, you're fourth. More than, more than not. Fourth, fourth, fourth fifth tier. You, couldn't, you could list five or six presenters at the BBC. I don't like this negative energy coming off you today. No, it's fine. But what I'm doing is attacking... And what I'm trying to do is attack. Let's stop talking about the fact my wife lives in London. She's taking the dogs. It's not a big deal. Attack, attack, attack. attack. 
a sensitive soul, isn't he? But uh, in, all, in all seriousness, Adam Peter, who I did actually, just, I was hanging out because I got him some eggs, got him his breakfast. No Dan one got, Wall. No one got him his breakfast. Just, just hanging out with him. Got, he, was, he was on BBC Breakfast and he, uh, what a guy. Fran must know him. What a yeah, guy yeah, this yeah. guy is. He's 24. He's got eight world championship medals. Took three golds back from... Um, so got their golds. Took three golds back from South Korea last week. He's, he's an Olympic champion. He's, he's a great lad. He's I, a marketing dream, isn't he, for people? But have, have you watched him swim? Yes. Like, Not every, in the flesh. Every yeah. now and again, um, I think in sport and in life, somebody does something differently and, or somebody just changes the game completely. Mm. And Adam Peaty, the way he swims breaststroke... Now, obviously, it helps my wife understand the techniques behind it, but we watch him, and he's swimming a different stroke to everybody else. It yeah. looks, on the surface, very yeah. similar, but like his power, his aggression to the stroke is like just changed the way... Like breaststroke, historically, is like a cruisy, glidey sort of stroke, mm -hmm. and he is aggressive. He attacks like every stroke. And it can't be copied, which is what's so fascinating about his stroke. So Mark Foster, friend of your wife, yeah. former British swimmer, he was on the BBC Sport swimming team, and he was saying that they put these cameras underwater on the lanes to actually um, see, their, see the stroke of their own swimmers so that they can analyse it and correct it on video analysis mm -hmm. and so on. But then what other rival teams have started doing is they started moving their camera underneath PT's lane to see what, what they can copy and what they can kind of coach their mm -hmm. swimmers to do. And it's very Mark, similar to, you know, teams do that with me and Mark all the time. Yeah. You know, in often the, in the gym, I just see there's a drone flies over and you think, oh God. People in the bushes Let's watch Mark Flanagan squat. Let's watch how, his, does he, how, how is he lifting so, so powerful? But no, Mark Foster, Foster explained yeah. it and said that every kick, he dislocates, he almost did work. He said that he almost dislocates his ankles well, on every well, kick. What's the relevance? Hypermobility in swimming. It, the relevance, is, Mark, is, is the attention to detail that this guy, and the, the, the specimen that this guy is, and the, and the sort of... To a rugby league podcast, what's the relevance? Um, we're talking about this. this is sport, just oh. a sport, Because you interviewed him today. We don't, we don't have to just talk about Featherstone no, Rovers. No, no. Just yeah. wondering why we're on it. It's not, not what, because I interviewed him, because he's probably one of Britain's greatest ever sports. He people. is, yeah. He is. But he will never get the recognition he deserves because he's a swimmer. Because he's a swimmer, because he's a minority sport, which again fits into what we're talking about here. Correct. See, I brought very, it back very, around. Very, yeah. loose. Relevant. very yeah. loose. Yeah. And well. next. <clears throat> right, gentlemen, we're going to be speaking to the Leeds forward, Stevie Ward, in a little bit. But let me just tell you... Stevie forward. Forward. Stevie forward. Stevie, Stevie, Stevie forward. forward. Stevie forward. Yeah, save, save that for when he's here, John. Um, I need to explain how this is going to work, because we're doing two episodes today. Uh, because it's transfer deadline day in the Premier League next week and I can't get the day off work. I've gone to the big time, sorry about that. Um, we're recording a Great Britain Lions special for next week with Mr Oliver Gildart. Um, John, we asked you to bring in your old GB Lions top. You were looking for it for about three minutes, gave up, didn't bring it in, which is a yeah, shame. Yeah, I'll be honest, I didn't look. Um, I didn't look. I, I, is it in Hull? It's in Hull. My yeah. mum was probably... So you didn't, you, didn't, you lied to the producers. In it. You lied to the producers. It. She probably you... framed it and took it to the local pub. It's on the wall in the local pub. The <laughs> How much did that go for on eBay, your signed GB uh, Lions shirt? Her signed shirt now, uh, you know, a signed... A 2007 shirt, GB probably, Lions probably Wilkins I probably shirt. devalued the shirt. Mm. It's probably mm. not worth the material value the shirt mm. once was. I wonder if it smells the same as these new GB Lions shirt. Wow. Look at that. Wow. You know Mark, just hold that up for the, the cameras there for people. But, and for people listening on the podcast, Mark, mm. if you could just describe that shirt for us. It's, 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 it's a stunning it's, shirt. It's, it's the closest he's got to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I might take it home and tell my dad about it. Ooh. There we go. Go on. It's, a, it's, 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 it is, it's paying homage to Lions shirts of the past, Wilkin. Yeah, it? I get excited about this stuff. Like for me, England, England was... Um, it's sort of an era of the game internationally, but, but it's never been about England for me. It's always been about GB. Mm -hmm. Like, I watched, I'm sad, so you watch like rugby clips from the past, and I watched the 1987 third test, Great Britain versus Australia. Recently, Andy, you watched Andy Gregory makes a break, pass it to Mike Gregory. Mike Gregory goes like 80, 80, meters, hours, 80 meters down the middle of the field. Martin Fai's running alongside him. Like, and that for me was like, I think. When you first get involved and fall in love with rugby league, it's those kind of things that inspire you. And I, and I had a video on a 101 great tries and a kick. I've got that. And it was always, it was Great Britain. It's Phil Ford, like iconic bits of commentary about Great Britain. It's never about England. England was not a thing. So for I, me, I'm, I think it's I'm, great. I'm delighted that it's back. Yeah. I think it's a chance to reconnect with the fans that, maybe the neutral sporting fans that used to watch Great Britain in the 80s and 90s. And it's tries like. The Mike Gregory one, it's Jonathan Davis Jonathan against Davis, Australia, yeah, 95. 
and we used to pack out Wembley. It was 80,000 80, sellouts for every international. Now, I think the, the focus has gone away to, to, to club rugby a little bit more, but if we can re reconnect with those fans and, and resonate with, with them and, and bring back the memories of, of, of those days, mm. there's a real opportunity there. So, we, uh, we might not need you for the GB Lions podcast, but Pro if you want to hang probably around, not, no. who knows, one day we might do one on the England Knights. Yeah. That one game against Ireland. Uh, who was it? Ireland. You, yeah. got, you got the shirt still? No. So, so stay, yeah, save, yes, the GB, yes, save the GB yes. Lions chat. <laughs> You've definitely yeah, got that. Yeah. Yeah. Mummy's got, got it. it. Mummy's yeah. got it. Um, save the GB Lions chat for the GB Lions special, which we're going to be doing with Ollie Gildart. Uh, but now it is time for some, some fresh young meat. That sounds a bit sinister. Because uh, I'm not talking about these two washed up pricks. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Mark, John, I love you in a way, but um, yeah, you're like two redundant turkeys who didn't make it to the factory for Christmas because you're rotten, rotten to the core. I want some prime rib, I want some fillet, I want some, as they say in Brazil, picanha. <laughs> <laughs> do they say it like yeah. that? That's how they really speak Portuguese. Yeah, sure they do, well. do you know what I want? I want Stevie Ward. Stevie Forward. Bring him in. Stevie Here he Forward. Is. Stevie Forward. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time I've heard it. I know, yeah. Stevie Ward, welcome. Um, firstly, you've got your own podcast, apparently. I have, You're the yeah, best. yeah. Do you think it's yeah. better? I mean, do you think it's better than ours? It, time will tell, won't it? I think time will tell. Is it in the, the early stages of this podcast, isn't it? So. Did we inspire yeah, yeah. you to, to start this podcast? Or you've been on the scene a long time. Like, no, to me, it seems like there's only room for one of us in this town. I do a podcast every three months or something like that. So, okay. you know, and I started. Two years ago, or something. Go on, what's Two it called? Years ago. It's called Mentality. I've got a top on. I think he's advertising. He's advertising. Just around. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I started a couple couple of years ago, maybe just less than that. Mm. Um, but it's been class. It's, it's been good. Class. I watched one with recently with um, well recently Brian McDermott was, that was amazing. John's that boss, was John's yeah, current yeah. boss. Mm. Mate, like that went nuts for you, didn't it? Yeah, right. yeah. Mate, it was massive. That mm. it was really big. But we, I think we'd only just um, touched the surface. There's, there's five, six more episodes that you could do on different things with him. Yeah. Um, so what, what's the, the sort of ethos of it? Is it just trying to be different to other he, things touches, he touches a little bit on um, his upbringing, his childhood, uh, how he went through Marines, mm -hmm. a bit of boxing, uh, and then how he brings teams together and, and what he does with that. And um, I think a statement he says, he says it is how he makes a group of men do something they don't want to do. So mm -hmm. in rugby league, we... Uh, we have to make ourselves, or we, we enjoy it, but we have to make ourselves, if we're going to get to the top top inch and top performance, um, run into brick walls and, and keep doing it repeatedly. And, and he's someone who can, can drive that, which is a bit of a weird mm -hmm. a weird thing to think about. Back you. You're looking forward to playing in the Championship next season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be good. It'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> you, that's, you've sat him at the right place as that's well. That's why I put everyone down you that end. What you see what you find Will will do is he'll fire a shot at you now and then he'll apologise for yeah. you. Yeah. He'll, he'll, he'll be up your arse in five yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's why he's physically up your arse He's going to give you the shit sandwich. So, like, he's starts getting nice and then he's put a little bit of poo in the middle and then he comes back with it. Yeah, yeah, that's what You'll learn to love me in about six I'd love to learn about how you do that just for my guess. Absolutely. It's not, no, no, it's a terrible strategy for interviewing people. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully you two are playing each other next season because you probably will be, won't you? Let's be fair. What about me? No. Salford, do you reckon they'll yeah. stay up, Stevie? We well, slammed Salford on this podcast right. recently. I think, yeah, I, think I imagine well. they will, yeah. Imagine I imagine they will. They're, they're I'm not going to say they're not. Might win the, the grand final. Yeah, that's well, long shot. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, know. be a good trip for those. How many, how many would they take to Anyway, that's enough of that. So I'm not getting sucked back into that. But no, on a, on a serious level, Stevie, um, for Leeds fans watching, um, you know, you are down there. There was a three of you on, on 16 points. It's, it's Describe the season. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Yeah, um, <clears throat> it's it's been a bit of a weird season to, to say the least. Um, we obviously had uh, Ferner at the start of the year, but I think you know we had such a good direction from in an attack, um, but he changed quite a lot of stuff, um, and it came to a point where it just it just wasn't working out, we weren't progressing as, as much as we could, and we could see that through the results. And um, I think we've had over the time a period of three, four years where we were after the end of 2015, we've had people, you know, obviously moving on and, and people retiring and um, it's sort of been one of them things where we've had to kind of 
get a clear message or common ground for what we want to do, what we expect to be each other. Because there's been an influx of different different coaches, different players coming in. St some stuff's worked out, some haven't worked out. Um, so we're at a point now where we've made a big improvement over the last six, seven weeks. Um, some results have gone our way and some haven't, but we've kind of got at that landing ground, really, um, where you can work for each other and, and you know what your teammate expects of you. And the nuts and bolts of rugby league is is that, especially going going up the uh, the ladder and, and, and challenging. That's the the first thing that you need. Whereas I think that kind of dropped away. Um, and these boys might tell you that. How does it drop away? It's it, it, it becomes it's, lost, doesn't it? it? Does, Sometimes, yeah. if you have a real big turnaround in personnel, I actually think retaining a message or a, a culture or an identity or. You know, maybe the values that you have as a team you do get lost, to get diluted over mm. time, and it can happen so slowly as well. Like mm. it can be maybe two people change, then four people change the next year, and then all of a sudden you look round and you're like, well, there's not many guys here who get what we're about mm. here. And then at that point, you've got to re-establish it. Mm. You've got to. You've but got the, to the inconsistency has has been mental at least, hasn't it? When, when you look at winning that, titles, that and comes then from down. stability, yeah. though. I think and that's from coaching staff, personnel. And then injuries and culture, and I think that's probably what I've seen mm. witnessed is over the last. I think you won it in seventeen, didn't you? But mm. it probably wasn't for that season. You didn't play consistently well during that yeah. year. You came good at the end, but since that fifteen, a lot of leadership has, has gone, and then they've probably not had the conveyor belt of talent coming through that Leeds had yeah. back in the day. I'd, I'd say as well. Yeah, yeah. It's just, like like you mentioned there. It's just establishing it again. Mm. Um, and it's, it happens. It happens on, on all levels of, of life, not just teams. It happens in businesses. Happens on a, on a personal level. You got to establish those sort of values and, and that drive that you want as a team that everyone respects, everyone understands, and, and everyone can be accountable over it as well. Mm. So there's been a bit of progress um, since I think it was the Bradford game. Um, I led some team meetings on, on just that on, on values and. Um, what we what we want to do as a team, what we expect of each other, how we viewed back then, and how we want to be viewed going forward. So, I'm really touching base. that because in terms, we've talked about it before um, about losing a dressing room, and it's a cliched phrase that's used in sport, isn't it? You, the, the coach loses the dressing room, but was no, but there a moment? Know. You don't. You, I, sorry, Will, and sorry to interrupt. Like, I don't think you ever lose a dressing room. I think you lose games. Yeah. I just think you lose games. No, but um, no, no. But, but do you, players but, feel that you know? If, nah. For example, you, you know, we talk about Ferner. A coach. losing the job. Was there a moment? Was there I a think it's a loss thought, of he's, belief. He's lost us here. We, we need to change. And because obviously the board felt like that. Mm, yeah, it's, I don't. I don't think you lose the dressing room. I think there's a bigger thing at play where it's everyone's everyone's on board with the same thing. I think that's whether it's from the start or whether it whether it drops off. Um, so when the majority turns to a minority, that's when it switches. Could be, it could be, but as you say, performances. Yeah. We, we had we had a deadly attack. We were having a deadly attack at the start of the year, but other things weren't going right. Yeah. So there's stu some stuff that's been ticked off that you, you you can't kind of say, you know, it's all it's all bad, it's all shocking. But there's some stuff that needed work on, yeah. um, and you know, obviously the powers that be decided that we needed a change for the whole package to to come together. Really. Do you know what I find interesting as well is that when you're in a situation where you're losing rugby matches and um, you always get to the same point where you stop and you go right. We need to establish some sort of values again. Mm. We need to have these meetings. You have a lot. You have so many like heart to heart, like deep sort mm. of meaningful conversations. You know everything is like really emotional and and you know you try and like break it down. And 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 quite often I found in my career, in those situations, the simplest things are often the answer. You know, mm. getting back to really simplifying everything. And Justin Holbrook did it at St. Helens, where we were going through a, a torrid time, you know, under Kieran Cunningham, mm. and then he came in and just really simplified everything. Mm. He was like, right, I want you to enjoy being here. I want you to be excited to be here. He said, I want to, if, if you're frustrated now, I want you to be excited. And he said, I want you to defend this way and attack this way. And that was it. And it was dead simple. Mm. And in a matter of a month, it turned around how we were playing. Just in, like, mm. it was so simple. Yeah. And it sounds like you, you look for complexity and failure. But sometimes the answers are always. And I think I think with that as well is accountability, mm. making everyone accountable for yeah. their job. And when you're losing, everyone can't, there's a bit of crossover. There's a lot of grey areas where everyone wants to do more or some players do less. But that's having one clear goal for the team and then filtering that down to personal yeah. personnel. Yeah. That's that's massive as well because that's what I've I've found this last couple of seasons yeah. at Salford is 
Just making each person accountable for their actions. Yeah. Sure. And the expectation at Leeds is huge. Yeah, it's big. Right. Yeah. It's, it's massive. Big, yeah. Like, there's no bigger expectations yeah. there, right, in rugby league yeah. right now. You, you, won't, you won't think so. And that comes at a price, but also that's something to strive towards. Mm. And um, just thinking on, on back of what you both said there, like, I think it goes on in, in normal life. People want people to like them, um, you know, whether whether you win or losing. But it like me, matter. like me, like me, pathetic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. As David Brent would say. <laughs> as David Brent would say. Um, but it's like you, you can't you can't make everyone like you, you know, whether you're winning or losing. But what you do need is is people to respect each other on a team, um, and then that's that, that's when those defensive performance happens where you know that you're not going to get broken down because your mate's got your back, your mate's got your inside shoulder, and. It takes a bit of work to get there, but it also takes a bit of deep conversations. It takes some, some sort of writing and tangible co sort of examples of what it looks like mm -hmm. for for people to understand it and I, people I, I to I say could, that's what I'm going for. That's I, what we all need to go. That makes perfect sense to me. But and going back to what Wilco said as well, you, you, you don't get that time at a top elite level sport, do you? And it has rugby league, has, has the football mentality spilled into rugby league and look, it's not working. How long do we give it to start working like it did with you and Justin Holbrook and Saints before they make a change? Because you're a business at the end of the day. Mm. As well, well as I think team. it depends at the stakes. If, if, if Leeds weren't playing so well but they were mid-table and they were safe from relegation, Furnham might have got longer in my opinion. Mm. But when there's a, a threat of relegation, which is, um, would be massive to Leeds, mm. Leeds getting relegated would be huge. That threat makes decisions a bit diff different, I think. Yeah, and it's it is some it's something you can practice. It's something that you can actually say instead of doing good ball attack. Right, we're going to practice celebrating each other, pushing each other. Mm. We're going to celebrate actually going and defending and not letting them score. But there's there's something that that has to rest upon. There's something that that's got to rest upon, and it can't just be just just simple writing on the board. Oh yeah, we're, we're, you know we're not going to concede tries. We're not mm. going to be. Um, we're not going to be soft today. Or it, there's something that has to go on before yeah. that. There's a there's a process that has to go before that, and, and you two you two know that, and you know you're learning and now. You would have yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he got his rhetoric. It took him ten minutes. Well, well played. Um, <laughs> you actually, am I right in saying you you made your debut against this shit house to your right there? I'm I did, yeah. Oh, you were both. Did. Of course, yeah, you were. Yeah, 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 you were. So I forgot. You, I forgot. Red, Mark used to play for Saints. Yeah, that was good to hear. Did you? Do you remember what your memories? Do you remember any sort of chirps? Chirping with these two. Not I just, remem I just remember. I just remember getting smashed. Yeah, Leeds dyed all the hair pink yeah. for mm. red nose. Well, it was meant to be red, was it? But it, it went. Was, <laughs> yeah, there were some pinks. There were some sort of reds. weird colours. Yeah. Some reds. Twelfth, uh, two thousand thirteen. But the, yeah, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. twenty twelve. Yeah. I came on at half back, like with thirty five minutes to go. Mm. Must have been thirty points down. Yeah. Fastest game I've ever played. Because mm. um, Wilco's a bit of a dick to play against, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. How, would you, how would you know? Well, <laughs> I've watched him many times, but uh, from everyone else that says, you know, you've mellowed says, a little. Says, 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 he's mellowed a little bit. The funniest funny thing about that round was everyone had red hair and everything were kind of uniform. That game we got beat and stuff. Everyone were led, left red faced after the game, but there were about twelve or thirteen players a weeks after that had dyed it back black. JP had the blackest hair he'd ever had in his life. <laughs> he, got two, he got a two-year contract extension. Yeah, exactly. He's looking, he looking <laughs> about 26. <laughs> it worked in his favour. And then there were people with like green hair and that, and you're going, oh my God. We lost, I think we must have lost three, three on the bounce after that as well. And you're going, it's just, just to remind them. Shave the hair off here. We just have to get back to, a bit to like, square. A bit like one. Liverpool rocking up to Wembley in those white suits that yeah. time yeah. to play Manchester United. Big gestures never. Mm. Spice, Spice Boys. Spice Boys. Mental, Spice mental Boys. Um, the, another... Um, when, Part of what we're trying to do on this podcast, that's not as good as yours, Stevie, but bear with us, uh, yeah. is, is, is the promotion of younger players in the game, which obviously has Super League has struggled with, not just Super League, but the, te the teams within Super League have struggled with. I mean, that's fair to say over the, over the years. And um, just going back to something, we had Eddie Hearn on a podcast that we've done before, and I know Eddie Hearn is not your typical rugby league fan. In fact, he can't tell you anything about rugby league, but in terms of someone who can see how to market a sport and so on, he said the only... He can't name any current Super League players. The only, the only, super, the only rugby league player that came to his mind was Jamie Peacock. Mm. So he can't name any current. Super. And look, that's one person that may not be a big issue to people, but that there should not be that divide and that sort of gulf in people's brains when it comes to no. this sport, should there? No, it's it's a big question, isn't it? it you could talk about so many different reasons. Yeah. You could talk about the fact that. It, 
it's such a good sport. It's like a really physically testing sport, mentally demanding and everything. Um, there is actually characters in the game. Um, not everyone's those robots that, that's shown on, on Sky Sports before the game. Everyone's got everyone's got personalities, everyone's got ups and downs. Um, we say every, maybe everyone, yeah, well, well <laughs> actually, that could be a bit broad, isn't it? With <laughs> but, um, We're still trying to find it. It's, it's in there somewhere. It's in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll find it. If it's in you, I'll find it. Yeah. <laughs> but, but who's responsibility, whose responsibility is that? For, um, for, because it's, you can't just put it on superly, you know, it's down to it. You say there are a whole load of things, but who, who essentially is responsible for that? But, but well, I, I understand what you're, you're trying to say. What, so what you're saying is, are you going to put that back on the players for not becoming sort of stars or household names? No, no, I'm asking you who's the, Well, for. I'm saying that the, the issue the game's got is when, and we spoke about this, so I don't want to make it the same conversation again, but mm. when you restrict... Wigan were really successful in the 1990s, and I'm... When you speak to people, they say the last sort of celebrity rugby players were a fire and Hanley and Sean Edwards and this mm. team of the 90s. Well, the reality was Wigan didn't have a salary cap. They had an unrestricted budget. They changed the game. They made the game become professional because they were professional. Mm. They set a standard and those guys became actual national celebrities. Yeah. Mm. So what we've done is essentially restricted our ability to penetrate into the national psyche by restricting how many star players, by stopping clubs spending money on players. Is, is, and there more, is there more to compete with now as well? Yeah, for sure. But you still it's have... It's a lot well, really diluted now, isn't it? Absolutely, But you yeah. still have huge stars in Super League. The, the roster for 2020 is looking impressive. Just you know, a couple of names. George Burgess signing for Wigan. Brock Lamb. Um, James Maloney coming over as well. Like, you know, there, there, are, there are big names mm. in Super League. So it can't just be a case of, oh, we've lost all our big talent. Because currently, even this season... There are some fantastic names, some huge talent that people don't know about. And that, that to me, seems quite sad. It is sad, Will. And is that not cry. a world we live in, though? That every, during the 90s, everyone watched Grandstand on a Saturday afternoon. Now yeah. people have got YouTube, they've got mm. Xbox. There's a, a plethora of different yeah. avenues for people to, to watch media or to spend the time. And I don't think sport is as big as it probably was in the 90s. Mm. And and certainly rugby league isn't. Well, there's so I think more, it's, a, it's, a, it's a product of the world we live in now. And there's more niche audiences, I'd say. Yeah. Audiences now are not a collective. It's not like everybody tunes in. Grandstand's a great example. As you yeah. tune in to watch Grandstand on a Sunday afternoon, well, you're not enforced to watch anything anymore. You mm. can choose what you watch at any mm. time. Yeah, yeah. Like, and that in itself, well, don't get me started on that. I think that is mad that you will never, ever broaden your horizons and you will just find things that support your view on the world. Like, that scares the shit out of me. Mm. That people can survive in a world and just only source content and media and, and films and programmes that suit what they already believe about the world. Like, when you used to watch, you used to have to... Nothing on telly, you have to watch Country File or you'd watch Grandstand and you'd watch, um, you know, it's Erling or, you know, whatever it was, just a mad sports that you would never watch. Yeah. I don't even have, like, you know, whatever, Channel 1 to 5, you know, like all that sort of old school channels yeah. where you'd flick through. I don't have Sky, so I, I just watch stuff mm. when, like, bang it up on YouTube, I, I'll stream stuff, and it's like, whatever my mindset's on. I'll, I'll put it on from there. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's like a closed box now. It's like yeah. a closed box, but people, like you say, they've got the blinkers on for whatever they want and they pick. So how do you get a rugby league athlete yeah. that bridges bridges the gap between being that sports star, being that you know, yeah, magician on the and, pitch, and they don't want it, and they don't want it too much, do they? they Look how much stick in. someone like Danny Cipriani got when he became that first sort of star yeah, in rugby union. Like, you don't want star, you don't want stars in terms of. I'm not talking about, and I'm not saying Danny has, but you don't want, you don't want stars in terms of attitude and people thinking they're better and bigger and this mm. and bringing something. Well, to you, you've, you've got, you've just got just to leverage. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm, yeah. no, I'm just saying that's what, people, that's what people accused him of being. Yeah, yeah no. but you've got to leverage your profile as well and whatever you can do. But I think players and clubs and the, the game has got to be better and embrace new platforms, whether it's social media with people spending but, more time on sports, social media than mm. watching BBC. Yeah. But but what um, the, now the world revolves around niche audiences. Yeah. It's a niche audience, rugby league. Mm. We've got to grow that audience. How do you grow it? Well, you've got to give people like enough sort of friction with the sport at a young age that they actually want to engage yeah. with it going forward. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, whatever you say, like the only reason we play rugby is because somebody took us to play rugby yeah, when yeah. we were kids. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then th you they, they had a bit there. of friction with rugby. They supported mm. rugby clubs. You know, yeah. your your old man played. Like, that's the only reason. Mm. So we've got to create more friction and more traction with with with, with the game. Mm. But that's so hard when. Like, this is a niche audience. 
We're on a podcast. But it doesn't yeah. have to be. But it's just a niche yeah. audience, yeah. someone to tune into your podcast who's mm. got a really specific interest in maybe, you know, sort of the modern man, you know, as in this uh, concept of, you know, talking about things, mm. about depression, about mm. all these big topics, chunky bits that mm. I've heard you talk about. That's a niche. It's just yeah. a niche audience. Yeah, yeah. What we're talking about is penetrating to like the national psyche. Yeah. And to do that, you've got to be mainstream. And I just don't know if mainstream media. But then going, but then anymore. what I'm saying, going back to Adam Peaty, who Stevie, don't know if you were here earlier, was hanging out with today. Don't worry about it. Um, you know, that, swimming is not. A, <laughs> he wasn't <laughs> hanging out with him. You were <laughs> anyway, you did your job. If you asked out. him where you hanging out with him, he would say no. I did an interview. Have you seen this man before? Have you seen this face before? <laughs> Never seen it. Uh, he, he, swimming is a minority sport, right? Mm. And I'm just trying to use this as an argument. Swimming is a minority sport. So are we saying that because of, perhaps just because they have the Olympic stage and something like that, that we can build a hero like that? Why, why, are, why is there not that current hero in this crop of Super League players on, on a pedestal, on a, on a, on a, on a level with, um, with someone like PT? He's an individual that's had that stage, hasn't he? That yeah, Olympic yeah. stage. Mm. Um, and people watch swimming when it's the Olympics, don't they? yeah, yeah. yeah. He's the world's best. He's the world's he's, best. He's the best he's in the, the world. Best. He's got that stage to yeah. show. But there should be surely there should, there's no reason why you shouldn't have the best halfback in the world playing in Super League. Yeah, but what, you couldn't because Just the NRL would steal him. Yeah. What stage could. would you put him on? Mm. You know, have yeah. we got the, the viewing figures? It's to, in terms, yeah. So that's what it's down to. It's, it's down to the amount of people actually watching this game. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So then, if it's a niche audience, we need to expand the audience, and that's the mm. conversation. But yeah. in a market, well, there we that, go. We're getting somewhere. No, but in the market that actually niche audiences seem to be the the thing, like getting into the mainstream psyche, I think it's a bigger challenge than it ever was. Like Ellery mm. Hanley and Martin Fire, you know, in in their peak in their pomp, were were it infiltrated that. That mainstream cycle. But there that, are people probably we, with that talent and we had, more that, we, that aren't just aren't getting the recognition. We had resident journalists on every newspaper then as a sport. Yeah. You know, we were getting more column inches back then for the sport. And the media's changed. We're at risk, a big risk of becoming an echo chamber of, of, of rugby league. And we need to get away from that. Mm. And I don't know how, I'm not saying I've got any bright ideas how we do it, but mm. that's the big challenge for me. You talk about somebody penetrating onto a national stage where you know, your sports personality of the year, you, the, the, you know, they ask you to stand up and it's, oh, and here we are with, with Stevie yeah. Forward. Here's, you know, like we're having five yeah. minutes with him. You know, <laughs> I was there. I was there. <laughs> is it Stephen or Stevie? Stevie, is yeah. Is it Stevie? Birth stick of it. Is it Stephen Gerrard or is yeah, it Stevie yeah, yeah, yeah. It's controversial. It I is. thought it was Stephen and I thought you'd be Have you noticed oh. Phil Clark's been calling players by the full name? Rich, yeah. Richard Myler and um, Declan Patton, Matthew Smith. I noticed it the other day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jonathan David. But, but it's not Steve. Take offence. It was Stephen. Yeah, Steven. no way. Well, yeah. Steve, isn't I thought it was Stephen. Yeah. I thought you'd been John. There's, there's, a few, there's a few people that think that. Yeah, <laughs> and you wonder about life, thinking everyone just thinks you're Stevie. But Steve. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, you thinks Steve. <laughs> everyone, everyone thinks you're Stephen or Steve. Yeah. Like everyone calls Did you, you Steve. Well, I judged you. But you passed. Yeah. You judged me. Everyone. No, I judged you, and yeah. I thought I thought this guy's a Stephen, and he didn't want to. He's trying to be a Stephen. Is Stephen on your passport? No, 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 no it's all Stevie on the past. Stevie, same as the birth certificate. Same as the birth certificate. What's your middle name? Stevie, what's your middle name? I don't know if this should go out there. It should, go on, no, it should. what's your middle name? Stevie Ray Ward. <laughs> Ray. <laughs> Ray. <laughs> Ray. 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 Now there's a name you don't hear well, very yeah. often. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Raymond, just Ray. Just Ray, yeah. There's no long names, man. It's good. Stevie Ray Ward, it's after a guitarist called Stevie Ray Vaughan. Wow. Yeah. This is, this who is he? Is who is he? Now we're podcasting. Yeah, this now is we're podcasting. podcasting. <laughs> yeah. but who? But was he in a band or what? Um, was he was a blues uh, guitarist. That's cool. Um, so mum and dad obviously had a few drinks when they were thinking about name and that, listening to him and they thought, boom. That's Maybe the you were conceived to... Uh, Ah, that's too far. Not too quite, far, not quite the knob that Wilkin thought he was. He's attracting now, isn't he? Um, Can I, I've got a question. Go on, put your hand up. Always put your hand up. I'm not going to put my hand up for you. But... Well, I'm, I'm really interested in pain in sport and mm. tolerance of pain and under, understanding pain. And obviously people who will be watching this will be well aware that you've had to deal with a fair amount of, of pain, yeah. haven't you? An yeah, injury yeah. and whatnot. And, and mm. Tell me like how, how you've dealt with that and how it's affected you. The, uh, um, there's, some, yeah, there's some sort of like avenues you've got to kind of look at and um, navigate you know, what you're going through. There's, different bits that I've picked up along the way. Um, but I guess one of the big reasons is is I've got a big why for, for why I do it. Um, you know, 
there's a point where I, fuck it, I was struggling. I was struggling a bit, um, and I felt that bad. I was like, you know, there's a, is there going to be a way out of this? If there is, do I want? Do I want it? Um, and I thought, if I do get out of this, I don't think I will, but if I do get out of it, I think it'll help other people. So that's like my why. So I've got a big why. So when I hurt my knee again or re-injure my knee, my head's going to be up my ass. Like, I'm not mm. saying that I'm not going to feel down, I'm not mm. going to feel stressed out, I'm not going to feel um, shocking, but I'll think, all right, well, I've got this challenge now. It relates back to my why, so I can get through it and go back to my why. And then my values as a human being, which I've, I've had to kind of figure out over the last few years, um, to try and link behaviours to my values. Mm. Um, that's probably the the kind of foundation with other stuff that you can kind of put on top of that, whether it's it's meditation, looking at different breathing techniques, whether it's training different, whether it's doing different things, because I'm always coming up to these obstacles mm. um, and, and, and struggling and striving with them. But Where does that come from then? Comes out of a lot of reading, a lot of speaking to different people. Um, but then just, yeah, just a lot of, of, of trying to get to know yourself a bit better. Um, which so I've this, had to this, do. I, I, this sounds like you've had some dark times, dark days. Yeah, I've had I've had some tough times because mm. you know when you when you're injured and you can't play, you know I've had nine months out, I've had twelve months out, um, I've had a lot of time time out. But in Sainsbury's the other day, um, I'm doing my shopping and it probably happens. Sainsbury's free, top yeah. end, top <laughs> end. Business, not middle. Not yeah. M&S, is it? Steve's it's doing well. Mid range, doing all right. all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. Four out of ten. But. Um, yeah, I went to Sainsbury's, and it happens probably two or three times, you know, when I'm knocking about, going out shopping or whatever, and there's just this old bloke, and he's, you know, those, like, flat, long trolleys where they put all, you know, drinks on and stuff and mm-hmm. they're doing shells and that. I'm, like, looking at Uncle Ben's rice or something to get for, for tea, and he comes up to me next, and I see him inside of my um, eyesight peripheral, <clears throat> and he's just, like, looking at me. I'm like, oh, so, sorry, mate, I'll get out of your way, and he just looks at me, and he just tells me my name. He says, Stevie Ward. I went... Yeah, he got it. It's not Stephen. He said Stephen. Yeah, Stephen. <laughs> um, yeah. Stephen, Stephen, Stephen Ward. Ward. Yeah. I would have walked away if he said Stephen. <laughs> yeah. So he said Stephen. I said, Yeah, yeah, yep. And he goes, uh, You must be the unluckiest man alive. And I went, Mate, I am so lucky in other areas. Yeah, yeah. It's just what they see. It's yeah, just yeah. what they see. They see my injuries. They see the time out. And and I'm not like. Lying, I'm saying, oh, brilliant! I'm injured or whatever. I'm not not fit at the minute, um, but I've had to have a, a long look at my life, what I'm grateful for, yeah, yeah. and like I said earlier about practicing different things, you can practice mm-hmm. that sort of um, team stuff, that that working for each other. Mm-hmm. You can practice gratitude. You can practice um, looking at what you've actually got, mm-hmm. you know, compared to boom headline. I'm out. I for think you become months. more rounded if you do that as well. Definitely. If you've got other avenues in your life, and it sounds like mm-hmm. you're quite well read, and you kind of intuitive in other areas of, of life and I think when you play sport you can just be so ingrained in, in what you're doing and so focused that you don't see what's going on I think exactly. that's that's something that some players struggle with when they retire yeah. or it does get taken away from them so quickly is yeah. the fact that they haven't got other assets and other avenues to, you to have, explore you have, you have blinkers on yeah. you feel like the, the, the thing that you've got now is like oh fuck I'm, I'm out for you know, what, four or five months or whatever yeah that is shit. It's shit yeah. because you can go to training just like a young lad. You can't play out. You, you know you're looking at everyone playing out. and You can't do it. It's exactly the same for when you're older. You got to go into gym and um, train on your own. Yeah. You look at that. It's a shit, shit thing. And if you've got blinkers on and you can't think of any other perspectives or different directions, try different things, um, then you're struggling. But that sounds like your coping mechanism. Have you ever had a time where you thought, and you alluded to it at the beginning, where you, ha- you can't see a way out, but you're so damn yeah. deep yeah. Well, in the well? I think world. I think people if people haven't had that then you know I don't think they're putting putting themselves into one area as much as, as they can do I've fucking put put my efforts into yeah, to yeah, one area really sure. so much but that's down to education though isn't it that's down to self education and exactly. like you say taking yeah. things to, to read my, my point about pain was, was a bigger one like there's there's a really strong link between chronic pain and, and depression yeah like there's a massive yeah, link yeah, between yeah. it because and, and you think you spend your majority of your career your rugby league career you know, you're in pain mm. for lots of it. Mm. You know, the yeah. older I'm getting, you know, the more really chronic pain's a thing for me. So I read mm. about it. Like, my, mm. you know, you go to bed, my shoulder's sore. Like, I wake up at two in the morning because my shoulder's sore. Mm. My hands are sore when it's cold. Like, 
you know, I've had the disc out of my <coughs> neck, I've had knee operate, you know, we've all gone through the same sort of yeah. stuff. And I'm just interested in chronic pain, like how we deal with it. Like mm. it becomes normal. But do you not it's say you almost, yeah, 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 almost like you blase about pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, oh, do you, do, but Wilco, do you it, not sadistically enjoy it and it's all part of the cycle? Mate, at the same I love, time? I, I, yeah. I, I After enjoy, a game, I what do you feel like you've. So put, that's what I mean. That's weird, that's weird to me to hear that. Like, you, well, it's, it's, I think it's on your days off when it's that constant, when it's 24 7, yeah. you can't get away from it. When it's when you had a massive high like a game, then afterwards you're kind of a bit sore. There's. You kind of revel in it a little bit. You feel bit, good I think. for it, don't you? Feel you, like you feel like you've earned it, but yeah. it's like weeks into pre- um, the off season when you're still sore and your knees knees are bad when you're waking up and you go for a run and you, you can't kind of shake it. That's when yeah. it kind of but gets on top of you. That's where your identity is mad because we fix our identity to playing rugby and training. Mm. Actually, training. We train more than we play. So we associate sometimes our identity with training. Yeah, yeah. And when you're injured, you can't train. And when you don't feel great, you can't train. And then all of a sudden this feeds this identity, like I'm not doing my job, yeah. self-worth is less. Mm. Like chronic pain for me is like, we, we don't understand what the damage that playing rugby league for a long period of time. Mm. And then look, Stevie, like when I first started reading about you and thinking, I was thinking, man, like you would have been in pain with injuries, acute injuries <laughs> yeah, man. for a long all period. Time. And time. then that got me thinking, I was like, well, yeah. that's, there's a link there for sure. All the time. Like, I'm always, yeah, I'm always in pain, whether it's a big one, like you've just had a nop mm. and you're like writhing around because it's like those two or three days after a nop, you're like, this is fucking shocking. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you forget to take your painkillers and yeah. you're like, you, but it's, it, it's coming back to it. And then there's stuff like where you get back running or you get back training after six to seven months out and you're like, oh my God, this is hurting me now. Why is that, why is that start then? Yeah. Because it's like the overload of, of what you're not used to. Yeah. It's, you start picking other stuff up and it is a constant management. It is a constant management and it's not recovery anymore after the game. It's, it's, it's a constant thing in it mm-hmm. to, to make sure you're not in that much pain. And, and this is what like people, are, like the CBDs come to town, isn't it? CBDs yeah. come mm-hmm. out. I'm like, I wish that the people that are saying, oh, it's not in for sport. It's not, yeah. it's not like um, allowed, you know, we've not been tested properly. They need to know what it's like to knock about in pain all the time. Yeah, and for just sure. Just yeah. Take, take that edge <laughs> off. Show me. Just come to Canada. The, yeah. the stuff, oh, not CBD, right there, the more herbal varieties out oh. there. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's legalised out there. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. is there something you'd like to tell us? Have you been? Not at all, no. <laughs> that would be a story, I've, wouldn't it? I've been clean my entire Good story. Nice little clip on Twitter. It would be a good clip, but you're not getting yeah. it. Um, I noticed you haven't cracked open the beers. Good, good boy. Because um, oh, you've got yeah. a oh, big... You've got a big old game on Friday, haven't you? Huddersfield away. That is... Uh, bearing in mind where, where you're at is a spiky spiky fixture yeah it's it is mate it's a big game it's a big game um, and we've had pressure over years where it's a big game because we're at the end of the table and, and now we're we're not you know we're in, we're in that that shit fight if you like so it is a big game pal and um, but as we've, we've spoke about a little before we can only focus on ourselves and, and what our job entails and just do that and then everyone else can do their job mm. it's, it is as simple as that and if the standards and, and people are being accountable of that then hopefully we can, we can get the job done mm. excellent excellent how, how many surgeries have you had? 10 10? 10, Ten. Uh, yeah. on how? what which body parts? Um, which body parts shoulder you? three on my left shoulder one on my right uh, one on my left ankle and about four on my right knee for all, those, all, all the same knee? yeah those people who don't know, I, I interviewed Stevie on the pitch at Old Trafford mm. after, um, was it 15? 17. 17. Was it 17. 17. You with Alex Wormsley? No, it's better than that because yeah. Stevie, he dislocated your shoulder two weeks before, hadn't you? Week or week before. Week before, week before, before. Yeah. Mm. And if people, right. Can you, can you talk us through that? Thing, yeah. Talk us through when we talk about pain and, and playing with pain, training with pain. How, what was your approach to that the biggest one of the biggest games of your career having dislocated your shoulder the week before how what what was going through your mind how how did you combat the yeah. the nerves before before such a big game on that do you know what it was like strange it was so strange because <clears throat> I'd had it ripped away from me the week before mm. so I was in a, a and e and they couldn't put my shoulder back in for until the next morning until 10 a.m. the next morning so if you've got that's a nice night you've had a great night sleep it was a shocking mate I didn't, I, was, I didn't sleep a wink I didn't sleep a wink I won um, obviously painkillers but it won't touch insides um, so I won that for what yeah 12 hours 13 hours before it got put back in so the shoulder out all night um, and I'm, I'm yeah mate just just shocking just shocking right but it got ripped away from me so much that because we'd won I'm missing another grand final, 2015. I missed that one from injury before. But um, 
on the Sunday um, after I'd had it put back in, and, um, and in fact, before I went to, to get put it back in on the, um, there were a nurse, a male nurse from from um, he supported Wakefield. He says, "Oh, uh, you know, it looks like you're injured. You're not in a good way." He says, "Yeah, no, no." He says, "What do you reckon? You reckon there's a chance here for Grand Final?" Went, "See what what in, what what, uh, what you've had done. How bad it is, and you never know." And then he like lights out. Obviously, moped around for a day or two, and then on the Sunday. I was texting people, I was kind of like, only just picked my phone up because I felt that shocking. I, when I, I got to a point where I stopped feeling sorry for myself. I was texting people, talking about when I was 12 years old, and this is, looking back, it's a bit it's a bit mental, but um, I dislocated my AC joint playing Bulldogs at, at school. And because I didn't want us to lose by so much against Featherstone Lions for Cherwell Chiefs, Two weeks later, I'd put these big bulldog pads on and a bit of bubble wrap and, and played. And I were out there making tackles. And I'm like, right, I've gone into the cookie jar. I'm like, if there's any time when I'm going to play with sore shoulders, it's a grand final. So every, everything that comes in this week from now, from that Sunday night, when my shoulder in a sling is going to allow me to play in the grand final. So almost like a dream. It almost like everything's going to work here. Mm. And I got myself in that mind state where everything that, that is going to happen is going to allow me to play. The only time I got nervous was when I sat down at change rooms and I was playing, playing music. I was like, this is big, this. what if my shoulder doesn't work? What if it's popped straight back out? But after the first tackle um, from kickoff, yeah, you, you made the first tackle. Yeah, you? I was Remember sweet on that, that shoulder. We watched it the first tackle of the game. Yeah, yeah, we watched yeah. I was just like, yeah, we just went for it as well. Just on you? another level, yeah. yeah. We went for it. I was yeah. like, good lad, like, yeah. <laughs> absolutely flew. Like, yeah. My yeah. arm was nowhere. Well, I think you've got to do that in those situations. You think so, you know, like jumping out. I thought, this is it, this is it. And you only get, imagine so many moments of them in your life. Yeah. And that were a moment that is. Is, is crazy after it I've fucking well listen mate thank you so much for coming in you've got yeah, some great stories man. there really insightful um, what about you fancy yourself in one of these in October yeah, nice, that we'll get you in the GB nice. line squad we'll see if the squeeze me in chance you'll be there yeah well Stephen forward there's we'll a chance see. there there is a chance <laughs> there's, there's always a chance there's, always, there's a chance. always a chance well I hope you're in there and I hope um, you get out of the Shit fight, as you put it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Have a good one against Huddersfield. Yeah, good stuff, man. Stevie Topman, thanks for coming in. Uh, Stevie Forward, that is a download uh, out of your league via Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, watch us on YouTube. He's gone. He's gone already. He's knocked his head on the light and he's out. Uh, <laughs> he's the unluckiest man. <laughs> the, the unluckiest man. He's just, uh, he's just popped his eye out on a light. Um, Cheers, Stevie. We're on Super League, at Super League on Twitter, social media. Hashtag out of your league, not the femdoms. Go and check those out for yourself, and we'll catch you little blighters later.